Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another of another show. Well, lots to talk about this week. I missed my last appearance here since I was traveling and the two big shows I had been waiting to see did not happen. One was the Old Vic's latest live minimal production starring Fleabag actor Andrew Scott. I've kept you up to date on that always changing one, how hard it was to nab a ticket and the show was temporarily postponed due to Scott's illness. Well, we are still on hold and it does not look promising. The other streaming event that I was excited about was a star-studded live reading by the Two River Theater in New Jersey. Well, it may have been a star-studded cast, but according to a lot of folks, it was far from a diverse one. So that one has also gone away. Other news of this past week, well, the Princess Diana musical, which was in previews when the curtain came down, will soon be performed to an empty house and shown on Netflix. Disney Plus, of course, has had good luck with the Founding Fathers, so we'll see how Netflix does with some royalty. Diana the Musical is still planning on a spring 2021 official opening. Now, on to what I watched recently, which I assume is almost all still available on YouTube or through the theater company's sites. So, speaking of diversity, I watched two powerful readings, one almost entirely female, the other all male, and all but one character black. The first was Crumbs from the Table of Joy, a reunion of sorts presented by the Martha's Vineyard Playhouse. Lynn Nottage wrote this play in the mid-1990s. She has since gone on to win two Pulitzers. The play is about a father and his two daughters who try to start a new life in Brooklyn in 1950, and it was last performed at this playhouse in 2016. And the original cast of five is together again for the reading. The actors are fantastic, a joy, pardon the pun, to watch up close. Like many nottage words, it runs too long and wears us out, but oh, those words, a few that I recall, are seems only white folks can laugh on a Sunday. They hate to see a Negro woman looking better than they do. The red scare ought to be called the black scare. I imagine a man invented the mambo, and many more such gems. I refuse to call them crumbs. What's interesting here is seeing, well, hearing the very young Lynn Nottage, never perfect, but solid hints of the playwright she would become. Then I watched the Rattlestick Theater's live reading of In the Southern Breeze about four men time traveling in a way through the history of slavery. This one was penned by Jiren Brion Holder, and one of the characters, I assume based on Holder, seems to be literally writing the tale as it unfolds. A noose hangs in the tree is his opening line. I don't turn on the news, he says. I already know the country's on fire. One character here is looking for someone, another is hiding from someone, and another is waiting for someone. I hope when theater comes back, this one gets its well-deserved run at the rattlestick. Now, on a similar subject, the New York Times took a night to take us inside the making of a new musical called Suffragist. The paper is focusing this month on the anniversary of the 19th Amendment. It's an interesting hour discussing the challenges of making a story about actual historical figures and promising to tell us more than we ever learned about the women who did their own form of protesting to get the right to vote. And we retreated to a song from the Still in Process show. Now also on the female front, you might check out Andromeda's Sisters. These monologues by women were performed during a, during a virtual benefit for an East Hampton entity called Neopolitical Cowgirls. Joy Behar wrote one, which is funny in a searing sort of way, and Blythe Danner, as always, is pitch perfect playing a real-life woman accused of being a witch centuries ago. And from a witch to a bitch, sorry, but that is the title of another monologue in which an actress portrays, well, woman's best friend. And it's very clever. Among the conversations I tuned into this week also was one between playwrights Joshua Harmon and Ebony Booth, part of the Atlantic Theater's Friday Talks. Harmon is a young man behind bad Jews, significant other admissions, and other always provocative works. Booth wrote her first play, Paris, for the Atlantic. Both are Juilliard graduates, and they have a nice conversation about what theater will look like when it comes back. 
they don't necessarily see jukebox musicals or pandemic inspired stories. Remember that in 1944, Tennessee Williams wrote The Glass Menagerie, Harmon says. People don't go to theater to get a distillation of the news, and maybe what they crave is not escapism, but moments like, is Laura going to kiss the gentleman caller, and stories about loneliness. I thought those were good thoughts by Harmon. Their advice to future writers, Harmon continues, well, ask yourself, what are the plays that if you don't write them, no one will? And then there was the new group's chat with Brandon Victor Dixon, who played Aaron Burr in Hamilton and has sung and acted memorably in many shows. Most of the roles he created, but he discusses here the difference when replacing someone, as he did in the Hamilton role. I got five days of rehearsal in a dark room with the dance captain playing seven roles, he says. And he admits, I'm not afraid to steal from my colleagues. Okay, so let's look ahead, starting with tonight, Monday, when, it, when Lin-Manuel Miranda, Melissa Errico, Jason Robert Brown, Jason Alexander, and others take part in Moments in the Woods, a combo show and telethon to help the French Woods Theater Camp in the Catskills. Now, I have special feelings for this one. Our daughter attended that camp for almost a decade, loving every minute and taking part in countless shows. That one starts at 7 tonight, Monday. But again, I assume it's recorded and available after. Continuing through the week, on Tuesday night, the New York Times continues its tribute to the 19th Amendment by streaming what it calls an innovative new virtual play called Finish the Fight. Also on Tuesday, the Latino Theater of Los Angeles begins its new virtual season. These will be comprised of archival works and peaks of what is ahead, whenever that is. Check out the www.thelatc.org. On Wednesday at noon, the latest Theater of War offering will stream live. These have been excellent readings from Sophocles, mostly, by wonderful actors, followed by a lengthy discussion with healthcare providers who always seem to find relevance in the old and wise words. This week's features Francis McDormand and Jesse Eisenberg. On Thursday, something called Theater for One begins, another tribute to the 19th Amendment. It will feature streamed works by women of color, including Lydia Diamond and the aforementioned Lynn Nottage. And these will appear every Thursday through September. On Saturday, the whole family can all tune in to You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, via the Ensemble Theater Company in Santa Barbara. There's a matinee showing at 2 and another at 7. Saturday night may be the big feature of my week called Judgment Day. This reading by the great Barrington Stage Company near you will feature Patti Lapone, Jason Alexander, Santino Fontana, and Michael McKean. Well, and if you miss it live, it will stream several more days. Finally, let me say something about rooms. They have been the most oft-repeated theme of so many of the new works that have come up during this time. In the last few weeks alone, I've watched the living room plays, the bathroom plays, and one room. Thank you, Eden Theatre Company in New York and Weston Playhouse in Vermont for these original short pieces, often monologues, now accessible on YouTube. So here you are, alive in your room. How do you make it really yours, asked the fine actress, Alfre Woodard, opening one room. So many big sentiments throughout these tiny pieces. Look at the walls. I've been staring at mine for three months. I thought they could protect me, says one character. Have you ever watched the Lily Bloom? Says another. It's three o'clock on whatever day this is. Well, all very relatable stuff, Jill, to whatever room we are in on whatever day this is. And what day is this, by the way? I can tell you that. Okay. I bet you can't tell me the date. I certainly can. It's the 17th. Very good. And we are recording your show, which airs on Thursday. Okay. All right. Um, what I would like to know, though, is what um, it, it seems like the shows that are um, uh, being done are pretty consistent. Uh, and I'm just wondering if there is any indication that people are going to start doing, you know, something slightly different, for example. Yeah, you mean the live readings that are streaming and all yeah, these? Yeah, I, because I, 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 know, I, I know that I would, So, but uh, I just yeah. wonder if there's a, you know, it just, you, there were all those wonderful, or not so wonderful, but there were all, you taught us about two-handers, for example. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, it would seem that uh, technology is sufficiently advanced and people know enough about what they're doing that, uh, you know, a couple of those could be attempted. Absolutely. You mean attempted to move to stage or attempted on this platform? Attempted on this platform. Yeah, on this platform. It just seems as though we are at a point where the platform can be somewhat expand. the, the, The use of the platform could be somewhat expanded. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's it's hard technically. I've I've done two of these myself this during the pandemic. I mean, I wrote co-wrote a couple. Um, and technically, they are a challenge, especially if you're using voices from outside. You know, the people aren't together. Obviously, they're in separate rooms. Pardon the expression. So, you know, technically, it's a challenge. Uh, so you're not seeing a lot of really creative direction because there's only so much somebody can do. But uh, in terms of the subject matter, um, you know, that's, that'll be interesting to watch. How long are people going to w- keep wanting to see things that are about how we're living now? I don't know if you read today in the paper about the Donner Playhouse in London, which has just put up its first uh, play, so to speak, which is called Blindness. And people literally go in. I mean, it's all safe. You go in there. It only takes a certain number of people. You're sitting far away, blah, blah, blah. Not only are you wearing masks, I think you're covering your eyes, so you're you're only hearing something. Uh, it's very much plague related and in feel, of course. Um, but I don't know. That's why I like that conversation when Josh Harmon was talking about what are people going to want to watch when we get back. And he did remind us that, you know, we don't necessarily want to to see things that reflect what we all want. Is every play that comes back going to have to have something relating to the pandemic? Is that what people are going to want? I, I got to want the silly stuff. Um, maybe not e- that either. Maybe they are going to want the, you know, the uh, Tennessee Williams type works and more, you know, with the moments in life that matter, whether she's going to kiss the gentleman collar. You know, those are the things we want to get back to, I think, in a way, what, what matters on a day to day in our lives. You know, we've, we're going to have had enough of this thing. So who knows? Hugh Jackman coming in The Music Man, that may be the perfect tonic. Oh, and, uh, you know, again, if anyone wants to solicit my opinion, they know where to find me. Um, okay. It's, okay. Uh, it, it, w- by the way, what is the story with The Music Man? Well, they have a date, you know, May or spring 2021. Almost everybody sang spring 2021. And uh, when, not- and for that, when, when do uh, actual rehearsals have to start? I know they've been rehearsing it stuff virtually, but when do you have to? Uh, they have done that. Well, I would say at least a month before, um, if not more. If, okay. You know, it's all so iffy. Are are they back here? Are they? They're not going to put it up unless they're all here in New York. Clearly, right. And I guess they would go back on regular schedules. You know, all the actors are dying for that to happen. But God, you know, nobody can make a plan. Um, everything just keeps getting postponed and postponed and. I don't know. I'm trying to be an optimist that somehow I think, I don't think it's going to happen before 2021, but I do think uh, we'll have theater back and we'll be sitting in actual stages and maybe not outside, you know, six feet apart. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.